Okay, so everyone asks about replacing switches, replacing an oven thermostat, everything that's required here, replacing the clock, everything's required here has to have the glass removed first. So that's the first step in replacing any of these controls that are behind the glass. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you how to do that. We'll also give you a look into this 1962 30 inch and you can see how simple the 62s are uh, on the backside and maybe get a better view of some of the things that were hard to see in our last video with the 1960 double oven 40 inch flare. Okay, so to take off this piece to get your fluorescent bulb, either replace the bulb or clean the glass here, go ahead and take this Phillips head screw out right here. And there's another Phillips head screw. We've already gone ahead and removed that one. So we'll, we'll take this one out and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We've got the two Phillips head screws removed. This just kind of pulls off here. There is a rubber gasket right here. You can remove this and kind of clean everything up, put your rubber gasket back on. These rubber gaskets are, you know, no longer uh, available. So take care of yours if it's in good shape. Uh, it just kind of sits on the edge here and it's just a, a bumper that uh, protects you from hitting the sharp edge. So we'll set this down and out of the way. You can see the fluorescent tube here and you can see your piece of glass. Your piece of glass just pulls straight out just like this. Okay, it goes in this slot here and the corresponding slot right here. We'll just set this aside. This is your fluorescent bulb. Grab each side. It kind of rotates towards you until it clicks and it comes out of the two pegs come out of the hole. This needs to be tightened just a little bit. And here's the other one right here. Okay, the next step is removing the knobs. I always leave a couple of knobs in until the very end, just so when you remove these screws up here, these four screws, and you take this piece of trim off, the glass doesn't tip out. That's happened to people and the glass is very hard to uh, find replacement for, especially the original. So what you wanna do is just grab this knob, just like this, just pull straight out. Kind of keep track, as you can see, this burner knob has a long shaft versus, for instance, the oven knob, which has a short shaft. So you wanna kinda of just keep track. I like to lay them down in the order that I get them and then I'll move them out of the way uh, once I get everything off. So these are your burner knobs. Your clock knobs go on one way, they just pull straight off. There's a flatted shaft here. If your clock knob goes on and sticks out and doesn't go all the way in, turn it 180 degrees and it should press back on the way it should. So these just pull straight off. The middle knob is a two-piece knob. White piece comes off and the ferrule comes off. Other clock knob. I'm going to go ahead and put a burner knob on here, kind of like I told you, just to hold the glass here. Meat tender knob comes off, lamp knob comes off, broiler grill comes off. I like to leave this one on as well. Now we've got two knobs and we'll go ahead and remove these four screws and then we'll be right back. Okay, probably asking what these two are here. These are what secure the top plate, the top panel when it goes on. These kind of hook up underneath here. So these go in the two middle positions and then you have regular Phillips screws here. So. We'll remove these. The top trim will come off holding the glass. And now we'll holding the glass. See how flimsy this is? If your knobs weren't there, it can tip out. Go ahead and remove your knob. Remove your knob. The glass will just kind of come out, clearing your time knob here, and then just come out just like this. Okay, here is what the panel looks like with the glass removed. So your burner dials, your uh, oven dial, etc. So to get these off, you want to be real careful. You want to just come in behind here, kind of push in the middle, and see if you can get it unstuck, just like that. They'll come off. They have a little O-ring in there that's usually dry and rotted. doesn't need to be there. The indexing is going on back here. And these just push back on. So 
you know, kind of keep them in the position that you like right there. So since we're not gonna take them all off, but we've got this off, if we were replacing this switch, these are the two screws we would remove. The switch would come out the back. We'd save the screws. Uh, new switch goes in, make the new connections on the back. Put your screws back in, put your dial back on all the way, and then you could button up the glass. So this is just an example. Uh, if you wanted there went the little o-ring yeah, Replacing the switch it would be no different over here if you wanted to remove the oven It just kind of comes off like this Sometimes this will come unglued as well and you can kind of see the, the Fingerprint that it left you'll need to glue that back on these two little indentations here fit in these two little slots and orient the temperature to the correct rotation on the control so when you're replacing your say oven thermostat as this is you take this screw here this screw here the oven thermostat would come back you'd have to fish the thermal couple up and out which is the copper wire we'll show you that in a later video but this is how you replace things that are on your um, behind your con control panel behind the glass so we'll button this back up and then we'll move to the top side Okay, so this will give you a little bit better view of the 1962, which is a little bit simpler view than we went over in the 1960. I want to do this because almost everything is visible in the 30 inch and in the later years, which uh, until 64, 65, um, they didn't get too complex. So these are the spring trays here. Back behind here, the bolts we talked about, about doing the uh, spring pressure, which is controls the raising and lowering tension of your oven door. There's one right here as well, that bolt. This is your oven thermostat. This is the copper thermostat wire, as you can see, goes into the oven. Thermostat comes out, comes all the way over to right here. And this is a hole that just pokes through the insulation, goes right into the top of your oven and has the temperature sensor thermocouple on the other side. When you replace a number thermostat, this is the part that you'll have to unclip inside your oven. You'll pull this up and snake this wire back out, replacing your oven thermostat and all the little Phillips head wires that connect it. So this is your oven thermostat here. This is your broiler grill switch right here. This is your meat tender temperature set right here. This is the clock, so we'll go over lubing that and uh, cleaning that later on. But this is your clock. And these are your burner switches. Four burners, four switches. You notice that this switch, this switch, and this switch are all the same shape because these are infinite heat switches. So you've got infinite heat uh, six inch and infinite heat eight inch but the switches are all the same shape and this big boy right here is your speed heat switch you can see that it's almost twice the size it has a, a fusible link back here which will burn out uh, when the switch goes bad it's just a it's a f more complicated switch there's five wires on a regular switch one two three four and five and there's six wires on your speed heat switch so that's why this switch looks different than the than the other switches once again the part numbers are on the very bottom side underneath here where they're kept really nice and clean um, so once you remove the switches as we went through earlier in the video you'll be able to get the part number to replace your switch if you have a bad switch last thing i'll show you here is um, this is the terminal block that was hard to see in the last video so you can see here are the black wires here are your neutral wires and here are your red wires this block is your power block so when you're doing any kind of um, power measurements you can make sure that you have power going up here and this power block terminal block feeds all the switches here's your main connector we went over that about replacing if you wanted to do a uh, rotisserie this is where it would plug in if not you've got to plug your your two jumpers in this is a really good view uh, of the top of the broiler 
look for burnt wires here. They'll be discolored, but they're not necessarily burnt. If you touch one of these and it falls off, that could be your broiler problem. This is a very common spot for burnt wires. So the two wires for your broiler are here. This is the screw in, screw out fuse for your speed heat burner. This holds your oven bulb. So this is your um, ceramic oven bulb holder. If you can't get the bulb out of your oven or if you mess up the threads, which are very thin, on your bulb socket for your oven light bulb, you can replace this. This is very easy to replace. You simply pull this fast on off, pull this fast on off, remove this Phillips head screw, this Phillips head screw, and this whole white thing will simply pull right up and uh, you can throw it away, buy a used one, try to fix the socket, easier way to get the bulb out so you can see what you're doing if you're trying to extract a broken bulb, etc. So it's just two screws to install it, two fast-ons to connect it back on, and you're in business. This over here, this little box, and it's mounted in different places on different ears, this is your buzzer. So when you hear your clock uh, timer bzz, go off, this is the little buzzer that makes that sound. This is your capacitor start capacitor for your fluorescent bulb that runs here over the burners that we just uh, showed you how to replace. This just pushes in and twists, let's see, just like this. Okay, you can get these at a hardware store. This is a 22 watt to 25 watt. Just find the two holes in here, press it in, quarter turn, pull on it, make sure it's in there. And that is how that's replaced. I think that's all there is to uh, go through up here. Um, on this 62, the hole to do your spring is actually right back here on the outside. It's this cap right here and this corresponding cap right here. You just pop these off and you can put your socket right in and this, this hole corresponds to the back of the adjustment bolts. That's why these are here. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show, and this is for you uh, folks that may want to add a vent hood or need power for your vent hood that sits here up on top of the lid at some time. This connector here is what they give you for your vent hood. So you can see it's got a green ground, chassis ground. This green wire goes right to ground. This black wire, uh, surprise, right, goes right over to your power block to the black hot leg. The white wire goes to the neutral. Why does this only have two wires, a neutral and a hot leg, and not a neutral and two hot legs? Because this is 110 volts. It's only pulling one leg from the power block because most vent hoods, all the vent hoods really back then, were 110 volts, whereas this stove is 220 volts. So this is the connector that you would plug your Frigidaire Flare vent hood in, or if you have an aftermarket hood and you want to pull power, from the stove without running separate power to your vent hood. Simply cut these wires and you can splice in uh, your vent hood power. Very handy place to get 110 volts right here at the back of your stove for any kind of vent uh, force ventilation that you want to do.